dear colleagues, dear parents or parent, um, it is my pleasure today to introduce a very special guest to La Vajon and Mr. Müller. We spent quite some time already uh, last night and uh, talked about <coughs> education in general and uh, here at La Vajon uh, and uh, at St. Andrews and found that uh, there are very many similarities the way we look at growing up and, and learning and studying for a successful and happy future. Uh, St. Andrew is the first university in Scotland, founded in 1413, and the third oldest university in the UK. Uh, it has reached the top of the university ranking uh, over the last two years, I mean, uh, uh, ahead of Oxford and Cambridge, which is quite something. Um, the, it's got a very rich uh, educational and historical heritage. So if you ever make it uh, to Edinburgh, just a little further on, uh, you will find St. Andrews, and it's a fantastic place to just visit even if you're not studying there. Yeah, we are honored to have you today. And uh, yeah, in order to tell us more about the university system, <coughs> I mean, uh, you yourself have graduated from, from the St. Andrews uh, with an honors uh, master uh, in ancient history. And uh, um, yeah, Mr. Muller has worked in admissions for 15 years, a long time. So I think you have uh, everything it takes to really share what it is like to be a student at uh, St. Andrews and uh, yeah, then maybe move on into the world. I'm sure alumni are in touch a lot and uh, you know where people are going. So I wish you an interesting uh, hour and I hope uh, you will have a lot of questions um, that we can uh, discuss. Thank you very much. Thank you, very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Oh, pardon. And I would like to thank uh, Matt Tomic because he uh, organized everything, it was a lot of work, but uh, I think it's great to have dedicated teachers like, like you uh, to make this happen, so thank you and maybe a round of applause. Thank you. Hello, hello. Uh, would you prefer me to speak into the microphone or without? Can you hear me without? Without is fine? Yeah. Okay, great. Genuinely a huge, huge thank you for that very warm uh, welcome uh, and introduction. Uh, genuinely, I've had the most amazing two days already and uh, really enjoyed our conversations yesterday evening. And uh, it's great to be with you all today. Um, and I'm going to spend about an hour speaking to you about the University of St Andrews and trying to paint a picture, I think, for many of you about what it's like to be a student <coughs> at the university. Um, all of you are in uh, IB 1 and 2, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Uh, grade and grade we've got grade 10 also? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. No, that's good. I think it's important to start this process early. Um, I'm going to speak quite quickly. I have quite a lot of information to get through. But I'm very happy if you have a question and you want me to stop at any point, please just put up your hand. I'm really happy. This, is, this ultimately is about you. I want you to leave with a really good impression about what it is to be a student at the University of St Andrews. As we've heard from the introduction, this is Scotland's oldest university. We are part of the Scottish fabric, founded in 1413. It's one of the ancient universities. You have the, the Russell Group. You have a number of the Ivy League in the US, you have another group called the Ancients and St Andrews is part of the ancient fraternity with Oxford and Cambridge and Edinburgh in there as well. At the end of the day, why do you go to university? Hardest question of the day, what is the reason? Why do you go to university? Who's brave enough to answer the hardest question of the day? Two party. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Two party. Once you graduate, you can party. Absolutely. Uh, no, I mean genuinely at St Andrews, the, some of our students know how to party. That that is for sure. But what I have, what I, I mean, when I was a student there, as well. Um, absolutely. If you're so inclined, then absolutely, there's a party to be found. There's no doubt. But what you will find is students get back into the books. That is the key trait at St Andrews. It is a very academic university. We have, a, as, I'll, as I'll show you in a second, we have a phenomenal student experience. In fact, it's one of the reasons that we are so highly ranked. The student experience at St Andrews is genuinely world class. That's an expression that you can throw around very easily. 
the student experience at St Andrews is genuinely world class. So the primary reason of going to university may be party. If that is, this is the wrong university. If your primary objective is to party, this would be the wrong university. And it's actually, I know we're kind of tongue in cheek talking about it, but it is an interesting starter for TEM because a lot of city based universities are going to offer an environment that might be more inclined that way with nightclubs, shopping malls, you know, bowling alleys, whatever it is, that are going to be much more on, on demand and easy to access, whatever your thing is. But at St Andrews, as you'll see in a second, this is a university town. It is a 600 year old university, top ranked as we've heard. The first university to knock Oxford and Cambridge off of top spot in 40 years history of league table. So we're very proud about that. You've heard of Oxbridge? Well, now they're talking about Stocksbridge in the, in the press. And uh, I think my greatest day was when um, I saw Cambridge's marketing on the website where they were forced to say, we are now the top three in the UK. Now I say that, I say that completely jokingly. Cambridge is a, of course it is, a phenomenal research institution and it will always be, as is Oxford as is many universities. So I'm not here to say we're the best and everybody else is no good or, or to do anything like that. That's not what it's about. But what it is about is helping you discover an institution that's going to help you become the best version of you. And I visit many schools all around the world and I meet amazing students from many different backgrounds. When I come into this environment, I get a sense of community where a lot of people are um, very it's a very close-knit community and um, very international community, but everybody is different. Every single one of you is different. And I know there's 4,000 universities in the US, there's over 300 universities in the UK, umpteen good quality universities here in Europe and the EEA. You've got plenty to choose from. Why St Andrews? That is one of the key points I want to get to you today and, and try and address today. I am not here because I think I can strong arm every single one of you to apply and indeed get into the university. That's not what this is about. But there, this is a real hidden gem for many. Some people are, some people have busy lives and they tend to follow a certain theme which is you have to go to the cities for the universities because that's where there's going to be stuff to do. If you have to go to anywhere beyond, anything more rural, it's going to be a bit boring and I, you know, I've already done the mountains, etc. I now want to go to city life where there's going to be stuff to do and I'm going to be happy, however you define happy. Some people follow brand and they say, well, I just want that sweatshirt, whether it's Harvard or whatever it might be, I want that sweatshirt. And if I get in there, regardless of what the student experience is like, I will be happy. There's that word again, happy, however you define happy. Um, and some people just say, well, I've heard of Oxford and Cambridge in the UK, that's only two universities I'm going to apply to. Uh, I've only heard of Harvard, Stanford and, and Yale in the US and that's the only ones I'm going to apply there. Again, I say that slightly tongue in cheek. But I'm trying to get to the point which is, if you don't do your research, and I know I'm already preaching to the converted because you're all sitting here and willing to listen to this talk, but if you don't do your research, only you will miss out on potential opportunities for yourself. And so I'm here to tell you a little bit, not just about St Andrews, but about some Scottish and British universities and indeed US universities. I'm going to bring that into my conversation to just kind of show you what some of the differences of St Andrews might be. So bear with me. I know you've had long busy days and I know you've probably got a lot of uh, homework or uh, conversations to have this evening so I'm not going to keep you beyond 6.15 but bear with me for the next 15 minutes because hopefully some of this information is going to be really helpful to you as you begin to make your decisions about what you're going to do with your future. So yeah, I'm a graduate of St Andrews, I'm currently the Deputy Director of Admissions but I also have a focus on international admissions for the Western Hemisphere, so Europe, UK and the Americas um, and I've been there about about 15, 15 years as, as uh, Headmaster said. So why St Andrews? Ultimately this is a, a real academic powerhouse, world leading teaching, world leading research a global community of 140 different nationalities. So we're the oldest university in Scotland, but the Scottish population is 26%. The overseas population is 41%. The European population, so EU and EEA, is of just over 10%. Um, 
We've got students from China at 5%, India 2%. These are some of the kind of big international countries that have sent a lot of students to different places around the world. So that's why I'm kind of bringing that into the, into the conversation. But there's 140 different nationalities. And because, as you'll see in a second, this is a, a university town. It's not like in a city where you can compartmentalize. You put your baseball cap on and put your ear pods in and you kind of can avoid everybody. In St Andrews, if you're looking for anonymity, this is the wrong university to go to. You're going to leave your accommodation in the morning and be walking to class, and you're going to hear about all the news of what happened last night. Hopefully it doesn't involve you, but you're going to hear about all the news from last night. It's that type of environment. And then you get into the classroom, and the professor, who are, these, these are the people that write the books. Now, don't, don't mishear me here, because these are, this is not common at every university undergraduate level. The people that are teaching you are the people writing the books world leading research academics, not just the ones who've just passed their PhDs. You're getting in there and they're greeting you and saying, hi Maya, good morning, nice to see you, how was hockey? How was, how's music going? Because they've built a relationship with you, they understand you as an individual, and they're beginning to have a rapport before they just get in and start talking down at you or talking at you. You build a relationship with the academics in a small classroom environment. Get this. I was delighted when I asked the question, what's the uh, teacher to student ratio here at uh, Regent? And it's 1 to 12. Guess what St Andrews is? 1 to 12. 10,000 students, 8,000 of which are undergraduates, so that's our kind of population of undergraduate population. 1 to 12 academic to student ratio. And that tells you a huge amount. Before I get into detail in the presentation, immediately you're beginning to see that you're going to get a lot of attention from the academics. Next question is, who are the academics? And as I've just kind of suggested, these are world-leading academics. Go online if you're, you're interested in a certain subject, do some research, see what they've published, and you'll see what I mean. Um, Scotland, I mean, I've got a picture of, of some, some nice mountains in, in the background. Scotland is an ancient country, like Switzerland, like so many countries in Europe. Scotland is, is very similar. There's a very rich history of folklore, ghost stories, romance, if anyone's seen the old movie Braveheart and all that kind of thing, you know, it is a country steeped in history. And when you meet people, it's a very, it's a very uh, friendly country. It's a very open country. The Scots are, are very friendly, very open. Yes, they drink a bit too much whiskey. Yes, they do eat a strange thing called haggis and they wear kilts and things like that. But they are a very warm and friendly country. So why St Andrews? Well, it's Scotland's oldest university, and it is Scotland's top-ranked university, and so it's well worth continuing with me in the presentation. Rankings. Rankings, rankings have a place. At the end of the day, we all live our lives where we want, to, we want to choose certain brands, whether that's from clothing, to cars, to watches, to universities, whatever it might be. Brand is important, and St Andrews is no different. When we go to league tables, we are proud to say that we are ranked number one in the UK in the Sunday Times and the Times. So in the, in the UK, you have two different sets of league tables. Just to bear with me for a second, because this is important. There are two major sets of league tables in relation to the UK. You've got the national rankings, which are independent newspapers, the Times, Sunday Times, the Guardian, uh, the Daily Mail, and the independent, the kind of major league tables in the, in the UK. Then you have the international rankings, QS, Times Higher Education, and so on. The metrics they use to establish the university on the lead table, guess what? They're not the same. They are not the same. If you just want a quick soundbite to say, tell me where number one is, then you, you'll walk blindly into your future because somebody will tell you, oh, we're number one. And it's like, well, number one for what? That should be your, your question. And if you look at lead table metrics, then you'll find out a bit more. Don't be lulled into that. These league tables are not basketball league tables, they're not soccer league tables, that they genuinely have played a competition to establish, to establish themselves as number one. But they are a weather vane, they are a good direction of travel, and so they do have a place in your decision making, but they are not divine. They are not divine. And I'm saying that when we're ranked number one in the national rankings, that doesn't mean we are number one for everything, but it is, it's, it's what universities use, I'm trying to tell you this should not be your sole reason for choosing a university. Listen to the rest of the presentation of what else that might be. Different aspects of a university that I would encourage you to evaluate. The overall ranking, sure. Teaching quality, research output, student satisfaction, academic to student ratios, first year retention rate. These are very, very telling metrics that I would encourage you to consider and evaluate. 
St Andrew's first year retention rate is 97.3%. Now, I don't know if that sounds good or bad to you. Let me put this in context of the US of 4,000 universities. That beats, I think, pretty much every university in the US for first year retention. In the UK context, that is one of the highest in, in the UK. Um, you would expect this, Oxford and Cambridge have something up in that region as well, but 97.3%, we're not in London. We're in a medieval town with 140 different nationalities. There's plenty of reasons for people to decide to go elsewhere. Guess what? They're getting into year one, complete year one and stay until year two. So that's telling you something. What is retaining these people when they've come in and actually seen that they're in a town which apparently there's nothing to do and there's only X number of streets, etc. Why are they not all leaving? Well, we'll find out a bit more, a bit more about that in a second. Um, location, very accessible. Um, obviously, we're, we're here in Switzerland at the minute. I mean, I just took my flight yesterday. It was less than two hours with EasyJet, but wherever you might be flying to or from, obviously, it's very accessible. We're one hour north of Edinburgh, the capital city. To get from Edinburgh to St Andrews is exactly one hour. So it's very accessible. If you're in a city, I mean, I used to live in London for two years. To get from Heathrow Airport to Zone 1, where I live, took me an hour on a good day. So it, oh, cities, oh, it's convenient. You know, you're close to airports. No, you all know if you've lived in a city, depends what the traffic's doing and whether trains are running, etc. how accessible that is. But anyway, very accessible and one hour north of Edinburgh that hopefully you can see on the screen. Um, Americans make up our single biggest international population. 20% of students at St Andrews come from the US and that has been the case for a long time. We have partnerships with University of Pennsylvania, UCLA, Rutgers, Chapel Hill, um, University of Virginia, etc. Et you can go online, you can check it out. So we are an extremely strong uh, brand in, in the US and students are absolutely looking at Ivy League and St Andrews in the same breath. That's what counselors are, are, are telling us in, in a US context. So we have a lot of Americans coming to study with us and successfully then returning afterwards. But Europeans, including Switzerland, as I say, I mean that 8% is not including the EEA, so you actually bring in Switzerland and Norway, then you're getting up to that 10% mark. Um, I want to show you a few pictures. So we're, live, we're, we're here in one of the most beautiful parts of the world, so I just want to show off some of what Scotland has to offer. Some of you might have seen this from the movies. It's a, it's a castle called Elendonin Castle, up near the Isle of Skye. It's used in, uh, in, in various movies. Um, some of you might have seen this. Have you ever seen the Harry Potter uh, uh, franchise? There's no flying cars, but um, this is the uh, Glenfiddan Viaduct. Um, <laughs> this is not the Caribbean. It looks like it. The temperature obviously is nothing close to it. But who would have thought you'd get turquoise water and white sandy beaches in Scotland? On the west coast of Scotland, we have lots like this. So if you ever go over to the west coast of Scotland, you can see this um, a lot as well. I mean, we talked about Braveheart, kilts, haggis, golf, whiskey, Outlander. If anybody's seen Outlander in, in recent years, a lot of that obviously is filmed in, in Scotland. This is the kind of you know common perception, but it is. If you've ever, I don't know if you've ever seen Kaylee dancing, Highland dancing, and I genuinely like. I used to teach in Japan. I ended up teaching my class how to Highland dance, and in Japan, you know, everybody was a little bit reserved. They're kind of who's this crazy Scottish guy trying to get me out of my seat to dance? And eventually, we we had 30 Japanese, 13, 14 year olds up, and everybody was smiling, laughing, hugging it out. That is the power of Scottish Highland dancing. Whether you're, whether you're kind of into your hip hop or whatever else it might be, once you discover Scottish Highland dancing, life game changer, game changer. But anyway, um, it is, as I say, very, very uh, open culture. This, you might not be able to see it very well, um, but this is a bird's eye view of the center of the town of St Andrews to give you an idea of, uh, there's not a pointer, so I'm just gonna point myself just to give you an idea. So down here, this is the ocean. It's not a lake, this is the ocean. Here we have a castle um, from the 1100s, which is right next to the economics department, economics and finance. Uh, up here we have the beach where they filmed the movie called Chariots of Fire, uh, one best picture back in the 1980s. If you've never seen it, go on and look at the, the famous music. They played it during the British Olympics uh, all the time. The guys in the white t-shirts running along the beach. True story about uh, Scotland's Olympian Eric Liddell. So if you've never seen the movie or heard the, the story, it's, it's well worth a watch. But anyway, this is the one of the beaches up here at the top. That stretches for over a mile and a half, so I can't fit it all onto the screen. Um, then you have the oldest golf course in the world. 
I've just been up to a golf course, it's got a big barrier. You can, I run across this golf course every day and literally you are ducking as the people are trying to hit you. Well, not quite, but, um, so the golf course comes right into the town. Whether you like golf or not, you begin to get a sense of this is a, this is a mainstay of the town of St Andrews. Over here is a cathedral. This is where the Reformation took place. When it came to Scotland from Germany, this is where it happened. And the cathedral was destroyed um, during the uh, 14, 1500s and uh, same with the castle, but this is, this is where the Scottish government relocated in the 1500s due to the, the Black Death uh, taking hold in Edinburgh. So this is a historical centre in its own right of what's happened here. Some of our students were burned at the stake during the Reformation, and in fact there's a, a, a chap called Patrick Hamilton, one of the students who was killed, the Protestant reformer, and his PH is carved into the cobble pathway. And if you step on the PH, it said you'll fail your degree. So you're actually walking along and students are talking and chatting and they're not even looking at them, just go like that to jump over the pH and it's just like built into the psyche. If you do accidentally step on it, for whatever reason, as you're walking home, um, you can get rid of your bad luck. But it does mean running and jumping into the North Sea at four o'clock in the morning on the 1st of May called the May Dip. And there's about a thousand students on the beach uh, and they go charging into the ocean when the sun's coming up. And it's called the May Dip. And there's all these TV companies there and newspapers because they just can't believe anybody's doing this. But this is one of the big traditions that takes place. I'll show you the beach in a second. So this is another view of St Andrews. This is the beach that I was talking about before, the big long one. I'm kind of looking back towards the town. Uh, this is the second beach we have. This is where a lot of the, the, uh, the charging into the water happens. This is called East Sands. We have student accommodation just off, uh, off camera here, overlooking the beach. And we have, uh, I mean, we have a world famous marine biology lab. The Scottish Ocean Institute is, is right here as well. Um, you know, some of our libraries, you know, we have uh, a lot of very, very um, rare books and, and a lot of special, we have a, a major special collection uh, uh, with a handwritten letter from Isaac Newton. And uh, we have, uh, you know, a number of different things that you can actually just go in and see. And if you're lucky enough to, to pick up and touch. Um, Music, if anybody's into music, we just built a brand new music centre called the Lady Law Music Centre, state of the art. That was one of the universities at the time, biggest capital investments, but we've also just bought a, a school, a secondary school that had a very ancient premise, uh, premises there uh, in St Andrews, and we are building and gonna relocate our business school and School of International Relations to this site. So that's the university's current biggest capital project that's happening. So there is a lot of, um, work happening, but not to the point where you've got traffic lights and things happening all over the place, so it's not damaging uh, the overall aesthetics of the town. This is just one of our quadrangles, so just to get a sense, for many of you said you haven't been to Scotland or St Andrews, this is where psychology and neuroscience is housed, and also the School of Divinity, if anybody's looking to do Hebrew or to do New Testament studies or anything like that, we have a 500 year old School of Divinity in this uh, quadrangle called St Mary's Quadrangle. The pier, um, very famous medieval pier, where students, a, a student called John Honey jumped off the edge of this pier to rescue some sailors that were drowning. And to commemorate that, the students put on the red scarlet gowns. So if you've ever seen anybody at St Andrews, you see these red scarlet gowns uh, that came in in the 1700s. And they parade hundreds of them along this pier every Sunday and just having a chat to commemorate this student who jumped and rescued some sailors. So it's, it's steeped in tradition uh, at the university. And I'll come back to tell you a story about the, the gowns in a second. This is the cathedral, you know, just very atmospheric. It's a, it, it's a, it's a beautiful, uh, or the remnants of the, of the building are, are very pretty. Again, we're not a city. Some of you might be thinking, well, I wonder what the internship experience is like. We are in the top five UK universities for students graduating with internship experience. That's quite a surprise to a lot of people. Top five in the UK. Um, so, a lot of students, when they get to the summer, you've got over three and a half months in the summer uh, where you can, I'm not saying St Andrews do their internships, they're going to the US, they're going to London, they're coming back to Europe. But because of our connections and, uh, and what have you, there's a very high chance of getting uh, internship experience when you're a student at the university. Um, and very high graduation rates and going into, I mean, our main sectors are uh, management consultancy, finance, um, publishing, teaching and IT, the kind of main sectors, broad sectors that we have graduates going into. We do not have an engineering school. I know I'm in Switzerland, that's almost sacrilege to, to say, but we don't have an engineering school. 
we, uh, we do biochemistry, we do computer science, we do certain derivatives of engineering, but not mechanical, general, um, or electrical engineering. So therefore, we don't have a lot of students going into directly into engineering. We don't have a law school, but we have a high proportion of students going into law because they come and they do international relations or they do economics, they do a number of different subjects and they go into fast track programs to finish the law degree in, uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, less years. Um, so we have a lot of students who actually do go into law even though we don't have a law school. Studying. Um, okay, bear with me on this. Remember I was talking about brand and talking about university to find the best fit for you. Well, this, this is what I want to begin to talk about here. The degree structure and the teaching options that are available to you. In Scotland, how long is an undergraduate degree? No. Four. Four years. England is three. England is three. And in England, you only study one subject. There are, I'm, I'm going to speak broad brushstrokes, so before anybody says, but I found one that had more. Generally speaking, England, you study one subject, okay? And it is designed. You finish your A-levels traditionally, you then go to university, and you focus on a subject that you've already made the decision you're going in that direction. Baccalaureate, very, very different. You're obviously not doing three subjects. You're doing at least six, uh, and, uh, and, then, and then you're making a decision where you want to go and what you want to do. Scotland has a four-year degree system, and it offers you breadth, and it offers you, crucially, flexibility. And I'll come on to explain a bit more, a bit more about that in a second. You, 40%, 38% to be accurate, 38% of students come in with one name degree and leave doing another. I was one of them. I came to St Andrews to study psychology, and left with ancient history. Why? Particularly in the arts faculty, not everyone knows what they want to do. The University of St Andrews will give you that opportunity to discover that. So if you're just quickly running to London, or if you're quickly running to Oxbridge, or whatever else it might be, you miss this opportunity in Scotland. Edinburgh, Aberdeen, Glasgow, St Andrews, the four-year offering, traditional four-year offering, where you study a range of subjects in your first year. So bear that in mind as we keep going on here. You, every student, if you get an offer to study with us, you will pre-advise in August, and that means you kind of pencil in the subjects that you want to do of, to make up that complement of three. You then meet, meet an academic advisor of studies when you arrive in September, and it is then rubber stamped. Yes, you're going to be in that class, that class, and that class. You're getting that support through this process. Um, I encourage you, I was speaking to, to Maya earlier today, I encourage you to look at the course catalogue, the module catalogue, and you can actually see a breakdown of what we teach in year one, year two, year three, year four, for biology, physics, economics, psychology, whatever it might be. And that'll give you a real insight into what we do at St Andrews versus what you might be looking at elsewhere. And at least you're going in then with your eyes wide open about what we do, who teaches it. And crucially, you'll see in there, you have your class hours and your recommended guided learning hours, which means how much you should be in the library supplementing the other work you're doing in class. And that's important because we have a massive focus, and this is great speaking to IB students, a massive focus on independent learning. Where we are, we are set up to create independent graduates, confident independent graduates, confident independent research driven graduates who not necessarily are going in to do their master's or PhD, even though a high percentage of our students do, but whether you take that into industry or into further research, you're going to have highly tuned research skills and the ability to think for yourself, which I know the IB is you know, that's hand in glove and it's just an extension of what you're doing now and taking that to a much higher level. We have something called vertical integrated projects. I get, often get asked the question, to what extent can I get involved at research at undergraduate level at university? I'm very academic, I'm very keen to get involved in more research beyond just my studies and my classes. We have something called vertical integrated projects and that is anybody, might be to do with the environment, might be to do with economic policy, it might be to do with marine uh, habitat, whatever it might be, a project is started and 
whether you're in first year or fourth year, you can join that project and take part in the research that is taking place. And when you graduate, if that project isn't finished, it gets handed over to the next generation as they come through and they pick up the, the baton and they carry on. It's called a vertical integrated project. It's extremely successful because you can then take that as you're writing up your CV, yeah, I got my degree in this, yes, I did this. I also was involved in an interdisciplinary collaborative research program called a Vertical Integrated Project at the University of St Andrews. And you, do you know what? It starts ticking all the boxes. Can you work in a team? Can you demonstrate you know, real world application of the knowledge that you've developed and how you apply that to a real life crisis or situation, which is so, so important? Because, and I know this is the ethos here, university is not just about studying from the books, walking across the stage at the end, getting your, 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 your certificate, and then going on to get a job. You want to, you want to apply this knowledge to real life situations. Otherwise, you've lost a massive reason of why you go to university, to come back to that question. You don't just go to university to sit and listen, repeat, rinse, and regenerate the answers that you heard before. That's not learning. That's not learning. That's just copying and repetition. What, what St Andrews is driven by, and I'll come on to a slide on this in a second, is research-led teaching. And when the people that are teaching you are not, learning from, not teaching you from a textbook. They are teaching you from the active international research they're involved in right now, and they're bringing a concept, a principle, an idea into the classroom based on their current live international research called research-led teaching. It's the big mantra at St Andrews. When staff get, when academic staff get hired at St Andrews, this is what they're coming in to do. And it is, it's, it's, it makes it real. It, you know, you're sitting listening to the academic who's actually saying, I'm conducting this research right now. And this, and then the, and they're provocative and they'll ask you questions that get you thinking and so on. But um, research. It is fundamentally it is really important to the university and you've got a lot of opportunity at the university to get involved in research. Whether you're in history or you're in physics, whether you're in the lab or you're in a tutorial setting, this is a big aspect uh, of St Andrews. How long are you going to be in class? What does it, what's, a, what's a day look like at St Andrews for the students? Well, if you're in the arts faculty you're looking at around about 15 hours per week. In the science faculty it's up to about 20 hours in class per week. Remember I said guided learning hours. You're expected to be doing the wraparound reading in preparation for tutorials, because we have a tutorial-based system where you're in the lectures, right, maybe slightly bigger than this, very hard to engage with the academic, but then you get into tutorial. The tuto tutorials in year three and four, it's about anything between three and seven students. And in that setting, if you're sitting there against the person who always likes to give the answers, and you're kind of sitting there and you ask the question, you're like, oh, I should have read that, you know. You just want the world to swallow you up because you've got all these people sitting there going, the person hasn't read their brief. No different from any corporate business meeting that you might be involved in the future. A tutorial is a, is a surrogate for, a, for any corporate uh, business meeting in the future where you maybe have to present an idea. Maybe you need to disagree with somebody. For some people, that's the hardest thing in the world to do. I don't want to, I don't want to disagree and cause a conflict. Well, you might have to. If, if the company organisation profit margin is, is uh, heavily reliant on you disagreeing, coming out with a, with a new direction of travel, well, you better speak up. So that tutorial setting is so, so important for developing those soft skills beyond the textbook for real life application. And the tutorials that we, we deliver in that small environment gives you the chance. You might be an introvert. Public speaking, worst thing in, in, in history. I don't want it to be involved in public speaking. This is going to help you develop anything that you identify as a weakness. You might be an extrovert. You might have to learn to listen. And that tutorial is the other chance where you actually have to sit down and actually just listen and help somebody because you're actually partnered up. Give somebody else the platform. Give somebody else the chance to present that idea so that you can come across together as a team to convey a concept and idea. And again, that's going into CV, resumes. And when you sit in front of that employer, do you know, do you know what they do? They look and they see what university you went to. They see what grade you've got and then you move immediately on from that. What else? Who are you? But you're okay, I've got a long list of people with first class degrees from top universities. What else have you done? I, I, I was involved in the, the, fashion, uh, the fashion week at the university. I helped design the stage design and said, oh, okay. 
Okay, so you've got a bit more practical uh, um, experience about you. I'm actually the, the chair of the debate society, the oldest varsity debate society in the world at University of St Andrews. Okay, what did that involve? And immediately the conversation begins to develop beyond just what you've studied to, to real life extracurricular and real life application of your, the things that you have studied. So really, really important. Um, the academic culture at St Andrews, I've kind of talked about this, I've looked at my watch and I'm conscious that time is ticking away. But as I said, I was explaining today, the beating heart of St Andrews, beyond all those beautiful beaches, beyond the 600 years, beyond the league tables, etc., the beating heart of St Andrews is the dynamic, the relationship between you and the academic community. And the academic community, research-led teaching, we talked about that. Um, it's a global and diverse student body, but a global and diverse academic community as well. So they don't all sound like me, you'll be delighted to hear. They come from all over the world. Um, and as I said, they're instilling those attributes in you that are going to set you up for the future. So they're not going to hold your hand through the process. They're going to, and again, I'm speaking to IB students, so this is, you know, again, speaking to, to, the, to the converted in, in this regard. They are going to encourage you to think for yourself and come up with ideas and concepts different from what they've presented in class. They don't want you to just repeat what they've said, but actually come and evidence what your point of view is or what the research might be and come up with something different. They're the ones who are getting that A grade in class. So, um, just to, to expand this out a little bit. In the US, it's a four-year degree system, liberal arts education. We are not a liberal arts university, although we offer a broad curriculum, and I'm going to go into a bit more detail about that in a second. But in America, you have got liberal arts education. We are not the same as the US, but the US, Harvard, College of William and Mary, was born out of the Scottish system largely. England as well to some extent, but the Scottish system, uh, and in fact graduates of St Andrews who were um, signatures of the, the Declaration of Independence, who graduated from us, were highly influential in the setting up of Harvard and the College of William and Mary. So that breadth that you see in the US is has a lot of synergy with us in Scotland, even though there's a slight there is a slight difference between the two systems. England, as I said, and I've already described, very different, and that's a kind of pulled apart from the American system. Um, we talked about the tutorial, uh, we talked about research led teaching and faculty. So when you apply to St Andrews, you have to apply for a certain subjects. So if you apply to the US, you might not have to apply for a certain subject. It depends on the university you apply to. But when you apply to Sanders, you have to apply for subjects. So when you fill out that application form, it's not just about getting the best predicted grades at IB. You also have to complete a personal statement or essay that shows your passion for the subject that you've applied for, demonstrates your depth of knowledge around that subject. And you don't want to mention PPE if you're applying to us for international relations. So you've got to be so, so careful when you apply that you don't disenfranchise another leading university by showing a certain liking to one university that offers a certain course. You've got to be very, very careful about that. You will be rejected from St Andrews. Because it's so competitive, if somebody's already indicating the application, they haven't really thought about it um, closely enough about the programs we offer versus elsewhere, it can be a reason for rejection, even with predicted 45 points in the, in the IEB. Um, so, bear with me on this, just to, because this, this is important. Um, this is the degree structure, and you can see here, we've got the four years, year one, year two, year three, year four, and in year one you can take three subjects. In my situation, it was psychology, philosophy, and ancient history. But for you, it might be management, economics, and psychology. It might be social anthropology, film studies, and German, or, you know, whatever it might be. You get to build your own degree. You get to build your own interest within, within parameters. It's not that every subject is possible. Some subjects are not because there are restrictions for whatever reason. But when you're in your faculty, you'll speak to your academic advisor of studies. They'll help you navigate this process. And you ultimately study three subjects in your first year. You can study the same three in second year, or you can switch it out. I dropped philosophy into year one and started medieval history. I was beginning to enjoy history, and I wanted to expand beyond ancient, so I started studying medieval history in year two. And then I switched my degree into year two, and I went into single honours ancient history. But you could equally do a joint degree, film studies and, and social anthropology, at a joint level in year three and four. And if you write a dissertation, you would just write it in one of the subjects, and you would decide which one that was going to be. So a joint degree is not two degrees, it's the same academic energy split into two subjects versus one. 
um, but we do offer joints and we offer um, triple majors as well. So here's an example. You've got the arts factory at the top and then here's the science factory. Now you will notice there's a difference here at year two. If you're in the science faculty, biology, physics, computer science, etc., students take three subjects in first year and narrow it down to just two in year two. And then, in this case, they've gone from biology to a specialization in biology of marine biology, or it could be zoology or, or cell biology. There's a lot of different derivatives within biology and indeed chemistry that you could begin to narrow that down in science. So there is a difference between the arts and the science, particularly at year two, um, in terms of the degree structure. But what you can see here is, it's giving you that chance. Does anybody remember what percentage of students at St Andrews switched their degree? Well done, Maya. Yeah, absolutely spot on. 38%. That's over a third of students who are utilising this to make sure they're graduating in the subject they want to graduate in. And that's the great benefit of this system, is that breadth and flexibility. Okay, very quickly. If you wanted to do something super international, we have a joint degree partnership with the College of William and Mary in Virginia in the US. And you can study two years in the US and two years at St Andrews and graduate with a degree that's awarded by both universities. Um, we offer it in economics, international relations, history, English literature, film studies and classical studies. You can study other subjects outside of that but the main degree focus will be in one of those six. It's not for everybody because at the end of year one you have to go to the other university and that means saying goodbye to your friends, having to relocate and adapt and so on and so forth. But if you are interested in doing something incredibly international, this is what we want to consider. We just ran a conference in St Andrews um, last week. We had uh, 40 uh, councillors from independent schools all over the world, from, from China to Singapore to America, uh, Europe from Italy and so on and so forth. Anyway, I was speaking to a Canadian uh, councillor who's a, been advising students for about 40 years. His brother is a, a recruiter for uh, EY in Wall Street in, in New York, Ernest Young. And um, he told me as we were chatting, he says, Ivor, he says, now, my brother's been telling me this for years, that as soon as he sees that stack of applications and he sees that somebody's got international experience on their resume, he says it's a laser beam in on that person. So having that, I mean you've done it already at high school level, where you've gone to an international school, many of you are coming from uh, different places, you can demonstrate that, that ability to adapt and work in a, in a global community. To do, do that at university, it is another major tick, and that's just a, you know, everybody's heard of EY and Wall Street but it is an example of what is really happening in the real world afterwards that people are looking for real life experience beyond just a degree beyond something you can just add up and present that and get the degree at the end of it it's that real world experience that many recruiters from big organisations are looking for study abroad, if you want to come to St Andrews which in some ways is leaving your, your home country. You can actually study abroad. I mentioned some of the universities in the US context, but we're also part of the University of Melbourne, Hong Kong University, Renmin University in China, um, a whole host of universities right around the world. You can go and spend a year uh, studying abroad in year three. So if you wanted to do that, that's something you could consider if you came to us. Any I'm going to take a pause for a second because I know I've been speaking for a long time and we are going to finish in 15 minutes, but are there any questions at this point? No? Okay. Um, where will you live? So this is one of our halls of residence here. We have 12 halls of residence in year one. You are guaranteed first year accommodation. You're guaranteed in one of the halls. Some of them look like this, they're kind of more Victorian style, some are more modern um, uh, than this, built in the last, literally the last few years. Um, but St Andrews, if you go back to the, the picture of, oh no, it's only going to go one way. If you go back to that bird's eye view of St Andrews, remember I said there is no campus boundary. The town of St Andrews is the campus. And so therefore, you have got university buildings and accommodation right next to private residences. So after year one, many students will say, look, three, four friends, five friends, let's get that house of five bedrooms, why don't we rent it in and of itself, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, a, 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 a nice building, but if we've got five of us and we can all get in there, then we can make it work. So about 50% of students live in private accommodation from year one, from year two onwards. 
but if you want to stay in university managed accommodation, you can reapply after each year. So the accommodation, um, you get four choices and you're guaranteed a place in first year accommodation, you just might not get your first choice. But um, for Maya and Adriana, um, you have to submit your application by 30th of June for accommodation. It opens on the 1st of March. Um, and it's not first come, first served, but the sooner you do it, you know, it's good to, to get that out of the way. And you don't have to be then thinking about that ahead of IB exams, etc., etc. So I would encourage you to, to do that sooner rather than later. Um, okay, student life. Let's come on to this, and I'm going to talk a little bit. Literally, we're going to finish in 15 minutes. Talk about student life, extracurricular, what it's like to be a student there. I'm going to talk about the application process, just a couple of tips of what to do. Uh, or you can you can speak to Maya and others. Obviously, have been successful in this regard, uh, and obviously you've got great faculty here to to advise you as well. But student life first, and then we'll finish on on how to apply. I mean, I've touched on a little bit of this already, but I gave an example to to Maya earlier today, and I think this is a really good example. We don't teach fashion at St Andrews, but the students. It's, it's never ceased to amaze me. They, they don't kind of look around and say, well, we're not in London, so therefore I'm just going to give up my passion for fashion. They have created, I mean, if you go online, you can, you can check it out yourself. They have created a world-class um, fashion society that run all these events from the, from the set design, the models and the costumes and everything, <laughs> with, no, with no support from the university. They, they raise all the, the funds themselves. I think they raise about 150 thousand dollars and they gave a lot of that back to charity um, and uh, you know it's a really professional event now why am I highlighting that well we don't teach it it's students have just done this off their own back and created something world-class in terms of what they do they've taken that they've all gone to Covent Garden in London they've been to Paris they've run these various events very very well um, funded very very well connected um, but it's just a good example of what students of San are like they there's over 200 different clubs and societies not just fashion. Fashion is one of the big ones. They they do like to party. I'll I'll be honest. There's there's no doubt about that. Um, but um, you've got the fashion side of things. You've got political organisations. You've got charitable organisations. You've got environmental organisations. You've got over our sixty different sports. We're right next to the ocean. We have a scuba diving team. Uh, we have a sailing team. You know, uh, some people call it boat, but uh, 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 rowing. Um, Ski and snowboard, a lot of them tend to come over here uh, in, in the winter. Uh, let's be honest, our, our, our skiing and snowboarding in Scotland, I mean, we've had some good powder at different times, but when you actually come and ski and snowboard here, obviously it's, it's nothing in comparison. Although I know one of your faculty who went to university in Aberdeen, and uh, she was telling me that she actually thinks her skiing got to such a level that it did because she, she learned in Scotland. So I was quite surprised to hear that. But anyway, we do have a skiing and snowboarding team. Um, so there's a lot of extracurricular activities you can do, but there is a culture at St Andrews. So we have something called academic family, right? So I want you to come with me in your mind's eye. You're sitting there, you're listening to this presentation, and you're sitting there actually, you know what, okay, this is good, I'll put in that application. You apply, get the offer. You decide to come to the university, and you're stepping off and you're going, I'm, I'm confident, yeah, all right, I can handle this, and you arrive, and all of a sudden, you arrive in Scotland, Sweat begins to form in your brow, and your heart's beginning to beat. And you're thinking, oh, "This is I'm out of my comfort zone here. What if, what if nobody speaks to me? What if nobody likes me? What if nobody understands me?" I know Mum and Dad said just the phone, they get the helicopter in and they'd get me out. So you reach around for your phone. Somebody comes along and taps you in the shoulder, and they're like, "How are you doing?" You're like, okay, well, Mr. Muller says they were friendly, right? I'll go with this. I'm okay, thanks. How, how are you? I'm, I'm in fourth year. Um, can I adopt you? <laughs> and she's like, hold on, I'm Switzerland Taekwondo champion. Eh? No, 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 calm down, relax. Listen, academic family at St Andrews. I'm in fourth year, right? I'm going to adopt you. You're going to become my academic daughter. And she's like, right, this is weird. But no, listen, I've just adopted five other people over there. Do you want to come and meet them? They're your brothers and sisters. Right, okay, let's go. Listen, I've got a party. I'm just going to be at my house. The theme is James Bond. We're in Switzerland. Let's go, James Bond. James Bond. So you've got to come dressed up as something from James Bond. What was your name, sorry? Anel. 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 Yeah. Anel comes along, she sits down, again, the sweat's forming, the heart's going, I'm in this situation again. Sitting next to Maya, we happen not to know each other, and they're kind of going, are you in first year as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he your academic father? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Ah, me saw sisters, and they're hugging it out. Next thing, some guy comes in, oh, brother and sisters. Genuinely, this is academic family. So I'm obviously, I'm obviously painting a picture, but genuinely, whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, everybody gets adopted. I had three academic mothers and two academic fathers. You go a bit crazy with it, but actually it's a really important relationship because they become friends, confidants, guides. We have the highest rate of couples meeting and getting married. And I'll leave that there. So, so this, this family dynamic can sometimes take a weird... Anyway, uh, <laughs> That is not the reason for the academic family, but life will, life will be life. Um, but uh, so in academic family, I have, in the 15 years I've been doing this, I have never known a university to come out and support the first year cohort in the way that St Andrews does. From first through to, first year definitely, but second through to fourth year, they are out supporting the first year students. And it, whether you're an extrovert or an introvert, everybody gets adopted because it's like, you know, Instagram, etc. It's all about social credit. I've got 50 children and I had the biggest party and we did this and we did that. But generally, as I say, they're like, listen, I'm in fourth year. I'm, I did psychology. Do you want my books? It'll save you having to go and get them. Here's some of my notes if you want them for class. As I say, you can lean on them. I want to get into that house and I know you're in there with five people. I want it next. Can you speak to the landlord and tell them how wonderful I am? You know, you use these relationships for a lot of practical means when at the university. It knocks on to the biggest shaving foam fight in the world, where you get dressed up in fancy dress, called Raising Weekend. And this is going back hundreds of years, but what happens is your academic mother dresses you up in fancy dress, and uh, you get paraded down to the 500 year old quadrangle, and you have a massive shaving foam fight with 2,000 other first year students. It might sound a bit crazy, but again, it's like this rite of passage at the university. Everybody goes through it. Back in history, you used to get thrown into the town fountain, um, so that's, that now has turned into a shaving foam fight. But again, go online, check it out, and you'll get an idea. But why am I telling you this? Because it's this sense of community. It's this, whether you're from Switzerland, whether you're from Scotland, wherever you're from, you all pass through the same arch and become a St Andrews student. We're the oldest university in Scotland, 600 years old. We're a very proud nation, defeating the English, and they never conquered us. But you know what? This 600 year old university is your university as well. And this is the rite of passage as you, as you join the university. And that doesn't even get into the sports side of things or anything else. It's this tradition, this sense of community that I keep on coming back to St Andrews. What did I say? You are not anonymous. And this is the big attraction with St Andrews is that it has that strong sense of belonging. And I've, I've been saying this today when I'm coming to Regents and I meet the staff and the students and the kind of sense of safety and trust, etc. It's the same dynamics as St Andrews, but it's just a bigger dynamic once you get there. So obviously there's 10,000 students. But it's that, yes, it's world-class teaching. Yes, it's world-class research. But at its heart, it's this really, really strong sense of community and fun. Um, the I don't know if I told you, but we have the highest in 17 years. All the UK universities get ranked on student satisfaction, right? So this is the thing you're probably sitting there going, yeah, yeah, okay, come on, yeah, okay. He talks, he talks a good game. He's talked well about the university. But is there really anything to do there? You know, I've had a good life. I've experienced some good things. Am I going to be happy there? Well, this ranking, the National Student Survey (NSS) ranks all the universities last 17 years. St Andrews, 16 in the last 17 years. Why is it not 17? We had to change the, the narrative, I'll explain that in a second, but 16 out of 17 years, number one university in the UK for student satisfaction. Can I, can I, can I get it? <laughs> but genuine, genuinely, it is a place, and why? why? Again, it's not because we've got more shopping malls than anywhere else, we don't. Uh, it's not because we've got uh, X, Y, or Z, it's because of that sense of community. That is ultimately what is making this so strong, both peer-to-peer -peer and student-to-academic on those two levels, very, very important. Um, how to apply, just to, to round this off in the final five minutes, and I'll take a couple of questions at the end as well. Actually, this is just talking about some of the things. This is, sorry, before I do, I need to tell you about this as well. We have a lot of formal balls where you get dressed up in kilt, tuxedo, uh, Fancy, fancy, uh, whatever you whatever you want to wear. Maybe grandma's jewellery that doesn't come out so much. Get that on. And there are honestly, we have a. Do you know what Wellington boots are? 
we have a Wellington boot ball. So everybody's dressed in kilt and, and tweed jacket, etc. Wellington boots, and they go off with thousands of students to have this big ball called the Wellington, the Wellington ball. The rugby team have a ball. Each hall of residence has a ball. The football team has a ball. So there's something all the time. But again, you walk around St Andrews, you're seeing people in tuxedo and kilts all the time because they're going to one of these, one of these functions. So I said there was no nightclubs, but there's plenty of opportunity for the Highland dancing, which I told you about. Um, but just networking and meeting people and being in a fun environment that's not in, a, in an academic environment. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you're seeing some of that uh, just taking place there in the, in the background. So just a couple of other pictures. I think it can, it can tell so many stories just from pictures. So this is the May Dip. Remember I told you about that. Shaving foam fight that you know about. The red scarlet gown. So this, as you're walking around, the red scarlet gown is worn in a different style depending on what year you're in. You don't have to wear it if you don't want to, but it is very prestigious, so a lot of people choose to. But you wear it in a different style depending on what year you're in. And it's called the academic striptease, and you'll understand in a second. Because if you're in first year, you wear it. I'm getting a few kind of furrowed brows going, Where, where's this going? Um, in first year, you wear it around your collar like that, uh, like my jacket here. If you're in second year in the arts faculty, you wear it off your left shoulder, and it's hanging off the left shoulder. And they say, arts, humanities, close to the heart, off the left shoulder. Scientists, second year, off the right shoulder, and it's kind of hanging off the off the shoulder like that as they're walking down. They've kind of that sweaty brow has disappeared and they've got that kind of swagger on. So you see the second years walking like that, but the scientists, you know what they're like, kind of tripping all over the place. But third year <laughs> that's that's the best joke of the night. That's that doesn't get any better. Third year it comes down to here and it's coming off both shoulders. Fourth year it's off to here dragging along the ground and obviously this is the students losing the gown of ignorance as it is called and when you graduate you get rid of the red scarlet gown so as you walk around St Andrews and you can see that taking place here this is the, the red gown this is not a new thing it's, as I say brought in the 1700s so it's been around for a long time sport performance sport we don't just do golf we are very big into field hockey tennis water polo rugby uh, golf, of course, fencing, uh, boat, rowing um, are kind of some of our, some of our main, main ones. Uh, we have a, an incredible indoor tennis facility, the best, best in, in Scotland. Andy Murray was a, a big uh, contributor and influencer in this. So if there's any tennis folks, you don't need to worry about the weather in Scotland because you can do a lot of it indoor as well. Um, this is just some of the sports, in case there's anything on there, if you can read it. Um, um, you can always go online or check that out later on. When you apply, we are one of the most competitive universities in the UK. So what Maya and Adriana have done, honestly, is, is exceptional. You've done exceptionally well. Um, and um, the way to do it ultimately is academic merit. To have that strong predicted score backed up that we can see when we maybe go back to middle years and we can actually see that trajectory, that, that the predicted score is very valid. Obviously, people can have blips in their academic career, so we're not going to hold it against you if in a certain grade you had a bit of a dip. Obviously, that predicted score is, is key. So that is fundamental, yes. The personal statement I told you about, you've got to be super careful. We don't interview. We interview for medicine uh, and, and uh, the joint program with William and Mary in America, but apart from that, we don't interview. So that essay personal statement is your interview, and we read it. Lots of leading universities in the UK are coming out openly and saying, we don't even read the personal statement. We don't even read the reference, they say. I won't, I won't tell them, but they are openly saying, saying this, just drawing a line and saying, you're in, you're out. We read the personal statement. We want to know who you are. We read the reference. We want to know the context of who you are. Um, so if you really want to get to St. Andrews, focus your time. Give that plenty of time to write that in an effective way. Um, submit your application early. I can't stress this enough. What do I mean by early? By the end of October, if you're applying to Oxbridge, okay, you're going to be applying by the 16th of October anyway. Either way, get your application into St Andrews by the end of October, if it is in line with the school's policy. Why do I say that? For international fee status students, we operate rolling admissions. And that means that we are going to release a massive tranche of offers in that kind of early November period. So if you get your application in, guess what? You're there when the, when the, when the, the granary is full and uh, you're getting maximum exposure to the offers that are available. When you get into the second phase, obviously there are less offers available, less chance of getting in. So the longer you leave it, you run that risk of, of uh, having the odds more stacked against you. 
when you get into all our offers from overseas are going to be gone by the end of February and that's incremental. By the end of January you're probably up to about 90% of offers have been made. So early application. There is an equal consideration deadline through UCAS that we adhere to which is 31st January it was this year. So there will be offers available after that point but there's going to be less than there were available back in November. Early application. Focus on the personal statement. Um, get the best grades that you can and if you can come and visit because at the end of the day it's not about, about us it's about you and actually saying okay that guy was telling the truth or maybe a faculty member you spoke to who've got a connection with the university which I understand is the case from some of the faculty I've met come and see it for yourself because again it's not about your mum or dad going to university it's not about your friend going to university it's not about an alum of this school currently at the university it's about you and it has to be the right fit for you. And as I was saying to, to Maya earlier on, I'm a big believer in instinct. If you're in a situation and something's telling you something's not right, trust your instinct. If something's telling you something's good, again, personally, I think, trust your instinct. Obviously, you need extra evidence beyond just instinct, but it is an important part. And when you visit a university, that's when the, the tummy starts telling you if something is, is right or wrong. So if you can come and visit, I know you're all busy, but if you get the chance, Maybe you wait and see if you get an offer and then you come and visit, which is totally understandable. But I really would encourage you to, to come and visit. Um, I'm two minutes over, so I'm going to stop there. Um, and I'm very happy to take questions openly. Uh, but if you want to speak to me afterwards, I'll, I'll certainly hang around uh, as well. But um, thank you. I know, again, it's late in the day. You've listened to a lot of information from a Scottish guy speaking at 100 miles per hour, marching up and down in front of you. Thank you for your patience, thank you for your attention, and um, hopefully for some people this has helped give, give, a, give a view of the university that maybe has just changed your mind a little bit about what the opportunity might be. That will encourage you to go and do more research and make up your own mind. But I genuinely say this is a, this is a hidden gem, a gem for many. It is a world-class learning environment. I keep using that expression, but it genuinely is a world-class learning environment incredible student experience with incredible people of the highest caliber they are coming in you know I, I do the admissions a lot and the students that you're going to be studying with are going to be of the highest caliber whether they're doing the abitur the matura they're going to be doing the IB French back A level etc <laughs> they, they are exceptional absolutely exceptional but also a huge a lot of fun and crucially finally it is safe it is one of the safest universities. We do not have serious crime. We have got a Jewish community. We have an Islamic community, Shia and Sunni. We have a Christian community. We have an atheist community. We've got plenty of communities that are... We've got, we've, we've got Democrats and Republicans from the US side of things. Plenty of, plenty of people that polarise each other, shall we say. Um, and yes, people disagree. Yes, people protest. In fact, we encourage that, but it doesn't turn into conflict on the streets, and that is what is important. It is still an incredibly safe environment to be in, and you want to make sure you find a university where you can have a voice. As soon as you start thinking, I, if I go there, I'm not allowed to say that, then, then, then you do need to evaluate that, because university is your chance to consider ideas, have open discussion to try and find what is the right answer, and you are the next generation, and if you're not having that open conversation, well, we're, we're all in trouble. So St Andrews is still that type of university. And um, I commend it to you. And uh, hopefully some of you will apply in the future. Some, hopefully some of you will come and visit. Hopefully I'll get to meet some of you again in the future. But again, thank you for listening. And uh, hopefully this has been helpful. environment, particularly when you're all of a sudden the freshman, there's a propensity to kind of think, what have I got to be to be successful here? What have I got to be to fit in? Be yourself. Um, again, trust your instinct, um, but be yourself. Genuinely, I would also say, try, 
try as much as you can. Like there's a there's a sports fair, for example. There's a there's a activities fair where you can go around and there's all these people with desk going, come and join the debate society, come and join the rowing club, etc. And if something interests you, just go and try a few things. Just try one, you know, unless you're really following a performance, a really high performance track, try different things because then that way you can say, actually, that's that's something I'm really passionate about and I want to to do that. So use that first week, two weeks, month to kind of explore and try different things because there's so much opportunity. Um, be yourself, try as much as you can, um, I think would be would be two big things. Um, yeah, I'll hold it up. Good question. I have a quick question. Yeah. Uh, for students that are interested in going to Scotland for university, and they're doing well on an academic level, what would be the difference that you would describe going to St. Andrews versus going to Edinburgh? No, a great question. And that, um, so, we have students that transfer from Edinburgh to St. Andrews, and I ask them, I say, why, why are you transferring? And they say to me, that personal touch at St. Andrews is something that in their situation, they felt they hadn't got because of the site. Edinburgh has 40,000 students. So naturally, from an administrative point of view, you can't deliver the same student experience at 40,000 student university versus at 10,000. So that's where we can be nimble, that's where we can be personable, that's where we can treat you as individuals by our size. Um, so I think that's one aspect. I think also, um, we don't, as I said, we don't do engineering, we don't do law, there's certain big subjects that we don't do. But what we do, we're very specialist, and if you look at the lead tables, etc., you can see our ranking for the individual subjects in the UK context. We are very, very strong in everything that we do. Um, Edinburgh is a world-class university, world-class research university. Um, it's an ancient university, it's in Scotland, um, so by all means, absolutely go and look at that, but it is not the same as a St Andrews experience. You need to decide which one's right for you. One will be right for you, one will be less, and so on, and that's totally fine, but they are not the same. Um, so I would encourage you to look very carefully about what it is that you think you're gonna get from a St Andrews or an Edinburgh experience and kind of weigh that up in your own individual uh, view. Because I've got my own view, as we all would, about you know what would be, what would be right. Um, and people are very happy at, uh, at both institutions. I just think St Andrews is better. No, I'm going to joke. Okay, no, I'm kidding. Hi. And what was the start of the question, sorry, in terms of careers? In terms of like um, the uh, internships. Internships, sorry, yeah, yeah, okay. No, I mean the internships, to be honest with you, are largely following those sectors that I talked about before, from publishing, absolutely, um, through to, um, okay, not so much IT, but certainly management consultancy, so Accenture, KPMG, PwC, um, Barclays and, and a lot of the kind of big global banks, etc., and that finance management consultancy piece. Um, but also in terms of computer science, I mean, there, there, there is quite a lot in terms of startups and, and, and a lot of that kind of thing going on in IT. So, um, so yeah, it is, it, is, it is very varied and it is global. It's certainly not around St Andrews people are applying. Because you've got three and a half months in the summer, we actually say to students, don't stay in St Andrews. I mean, it's beautiful, all the golfers are there, the tourists are there, etc. But actually, go out and explore something else that you maybe haven't seen so far. If you've got friends going to London or, or going back to Europe, whatever it might be, then, then do that. But certainly, the top five in the UK of all universities for internship experience, I think, surprises a lot of people. But again, it's, it's with our the, the connections that we, we curate. Obviously, these things don't just fall on your lap. You have to curate and We've got a whole career centre, dedicated team. We're going out and building these bridges with these companies. Um, but yeah. Hope that, that helps. Yes, please. Um, what do you think is the most amusing event that happens at St Andrew? <laughs> the most amusing, yeah. Oh my goodness, yeah, there are a few. Um, yeah, I mean, our rector. I don't know if you've got you know about the office of rector, and they are dragged through the street by the students. So the rector is elected by the student body. And it's usually a very high profile. Celebrity or or um, you know, uh, 
saw you very much in the public eye. And uh, they, uh, they, they're paraded and kind of dragged through the street through this kind of big ceremony uh, at the university. That's, that, that can be quite amusing. The shaving foam fight, like some of the things people are getting dressed up in, you know, I could, I could even put it onto the screen. You know, some people have kind of wild imagination. So some of that can be quite amusing. Um, yeah, um, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what the most amusing thing is. I was sitting writing an essay, and I was kind of focused on this essay. As I said, I was doing ancient history, and I was sitting looking out the window, it's not a word of a lie. And I was looking out the window, I thought, I'm drinking too much coffee. Four Vikings walked past my window, <laughs> right? And, and with axes, swords as long as I am, shields, etc. And I'm, like, I'm looking around going, right, I'm not taking any more of that, that paracetamol. Next thing, they started hammering each other with these axes. I was like, I'm going mad. This is, this is crazy. I'm looking about for the phone to start calling the police. And it turns out this was the medieval reenactment society. <laughs> and I said, when I say reenactment, I mean they were reenacting. This was, fortunately, nobody lost an arm, but how I don't know. But I, I find that highly amusing. Because then they go walking in. I went up into town. I was in Tesco's, the supermarket, shopping there. Sure enough, this Viking walks in with not a smile on his face and just starts reaching for a bottle of wine with a, with a kind of shield hanging over his back. So for me, that's the most amusing thing I've seen.